And so the real walking begins for us. And can you trust that you won't blow away? Yellow warning, heavy rain forecast in Scotland. I can't wait to walk 500 miles in Scotland. Right, our second camp night, we just packed away. It looks really idyllic from here, but we're actually on a, on a dual carriageway. Good morning. <laughs> We're gonna hit the road, get ourselves some breakfast. We had a lovely coffee this morning. It's absolutely gorgeous here, just up here in the mountains. But over here, a little bit grim. Car's still looking good. We, we're gonna see if we can find ourselves a, a proper campsite tonight so we can get uh, use of some facilities because uh, the wild camping with the car is actually probably harder than wild camping on foot. Uh, because you, you know you've always got to have the car with you. Narrow little roads. I've come out for a little walk this evening. Sun went down. Oops. Which my ankle doesn't twist. Sun went down about half an hour ago. However, it's uh, still pretty light up here. A little heather here, I can see it as clear as day. So yeah, oh, these stones on this path throw my ankles all over the place. It's mainly because I'm talking to you and not watching where I'm walking. But yeah, sun went down. And yet the... Uh, the reflection of the sky is still very much, so I'm talking quietly because it's this mist, it feels so lovely. I reckon it'll stay light for another hour yet. Anyway, so it's a bit treacherous, there's some pretty big boulders down here. And uh, we're up in the highlands of Scotland, above Inverness, um, heading up towards John O'Groats. Michelle is actually just sorting out the, the tent and uh, doing the last little bits. And I went for a little walk just to check out the area we were in. So, as you can see, it's absolutely beautiful. I'm trying to think of the the small town that we're near. If I remember it, I'll put it up on the screen. But if not, it's about an hour, maybe an hour and a half to John O'Groats. Anyway, I better turn this off. I'm not sure if it's, it looks light to me here. I can see it. Hopefully the camera's picking it up. See you later. So we're here with Graham. We're outside B&Q in Inverness. And Graham's making us a bake, bacon butty and then yeah, we've got to pick up a few last things before we set up to uh, John O'Groats, but a little bit of sustenance, some coffee, bacon butty, fantastic. Thank you, Graham. It's all right then, yeah. Thank you, mate. Happy to help, yeah. Yeah, thank You're you, You're available buddy. for weddings and uh, <laughs> events in Australia as well, I'm glad you know. Yeah. Bacon butty, two slices of bacon, brown sauce. Michelle's got a lovely big stack of bacon in there. And ketchup. Cup of coffee, we're sorted. So we're camping in Inver campsites the day before the start of the walk. And we just met this couple, this lovely couple here, and they're going down to test the drone. So I'm following them down. I'm gonna let, let him sacrifice his drone. I'm Maddie. Maddie? Richard. Richard. Yeah. So it's Maddie and Richard. Yeah, Richard's got a drone. It's pretty windy on the coast. G'day, how are you? Little lobster pot. Are they lobster pots? I think so. Just come out of the wind. It's a real wind blowing. It's a lovely smell from these lobster pots here. 
This is a proper, proper little fishing community. We've got the Scottish flag flying here. It's absolutely gorgeous, huh? Probably at someone's house. I reckon Richard will be chancing it to get it up. <laughs> I think so. It's fairly windy. You try it, man, if you want. So it's the day of the start of our walk. We camped last night. We're um, actually in Wick at the moment. We camped last night probably about 15 minutes outside of Wick. We just stopped here. It's been raining all morning. We just stopped at this car wash. And the guy over here has let us just park under the shade so we can pack our stuff. Because Michelle and I couldn't get all our gear into our backpacks this morning because it was just, it was chucking down with rain. Uh, we've got to get the car back in about mm, the next 40 minutes or so to Hertz Rental. And then somehow we've got to get from Wick up to John O'Groats. This is an adventure that's yet to unfold. And it hasn't stopped raining. It hasn't stopped raining for four or five days now, which is a little bit worrying, isn't it? We'll be okay. Fill your water up. Okay, fill my water up. I'm gonna fill up my Osprey bladder. So we've got one of these big water drums, which we bought. We've got to use this up um, or dump it. <laughs> right, we're packed. Two bags, two very he heavy bags. And uh, we're off, off to get the car back. We've got 30 minutes and then we're done. So we're here, we're here at Hertz of Wick. We found it okay. The car is here, the backpacks are ready. Michelle's just limbering up, but it's all in good nick. There she is. Thank you very much, fella. Been a good drive. And that's it. Did you get that up on your own? I just put it on the edge. We're, you're meant to wait, we're meant to do that no, together. But I put it onto there. Yeah. That was, and then I did so it's not What lifting. did we say? We're helping each what other. What did we say? We're helping each other. Helping so that, each other so with the bags on so we don't pull a muscle. So we don't pull a muscle. <laughs> but I just did it gently onto there and yeah. then I sat down. All right, I'll let her off. <laughs> and so the real walking begins for us here in Wick. We've got to get up to John O'Groats, which is quite a distance. No more cars now, Michelle. No. no. No more motors. We we, well, we're probably getting a bus yes, we are. up to John O'Groats because I don't want to walk there and then have to walk back. It's kicking it in. in. <laughs> and these bags are heavy already. How do you feel? Yes, not too bad. Not too bad. Might have to adjust it a little bit as we walk. Yeah, I think Michelle's needs us a, a little adjustment. Sun's nothing come to, out. Sun's nothing come to say. Out. At least it's stopped raining. <laughs> so we're sat outside the Tesco's. We've just had a a bacon butty in there and uh, we got to wait now to get our bus from over here in about 15 minutes uh, 10 past one and hopefully there'll be no issues and we can get on a bus all the way up to our start point at John O'Groats. Well it's a good start the last bus driver told us 10 past one it says 10 past one on the the bus shelter it's now 20 past one no bus I thought buses have started running on time in this country so this bus driver here has just told us that there is no bus even though the online the timetable says there is a bus in the bus shelter they said there should be a bus and he just rang his depot and they're just saying oh well there's not a bus um there should be a bus at 109 and another one at 1010 that go the same route one of them was cancelled for today but man it's it's a good start so it looks as if we've got a four and a half five hour walk now just to get to the start of our walk <laughs> oh so we were meant to walk along this verge here but it's all over the place this is why nobody wants to walk the danger is cars can overtake as well when coming that way so you've got to watch your back but I'll stay out a little wide for Michelle shall we just do it yeah let's just do it or should we go down to the beach because we can always camp down there I think it's probably better on the on here on the road yeah yeah yep. all right decision made on the okay. road step up again <laughs> just hold Michelle's hand and we step off the road 
wait for the two cars to come past and then we're off again the solar's gone crooked the solar's gone crooked <laughs> nobody nobody solar. likes a crooked solar Michelle <laughs> now if there's no cars coming behind us the cars are going out nicely and we can carry on walking but you can see why the A9 is the least favourite part of the Land's End John O'Groats walk. It's the most dangerous and I do believe it's had more fatalities on it sadly than any other part of the walk. But Janice has assured us, Janice from the lady we spoke <laughs> to down there, that the next bit of the road after the T-junction is going to be quieter. So we shall see. We were going to try and make our way down to the waterfront of the beach. It sounded from what she was saying that we'd be walking along the sand of the beach. And that's really, really hard work. If you've ever done any long distance walking on sand, you'll know how that messes up your calves. So we've decided that we won't. We won't risk it just on this first section. The only thing is cars do tend to slow down, which is a good thing. So yeah, it is a bit of a treacherous, here we go again, another stop. Could you imagine, this is a hundred miles to Inverness on this road. If you had to do this road on the walk, a hundred miles is, is days and days of walking. It wouldn't be pleasant. So hopefully we can, we can get off this road. We're not even started the <laughs> John O'Groats Land's End walk yet. And we're already doing miles of hiking because we couldn't get transportation because of the COVID and because the buses aren't running. He told us the next bus was going to be sort of six, seven o'clock in the evening. Well, we're not going to wait five hours, six hours at Tesco's. And particularly as we found in this area of Scotland, the weather tends to turn bad towards the end of the day. So Michelle and I have decided, even though it might take us four hours, we are going to walk to John O'Groats. And then, sadly, we've got to walk all the way back again. We didn't film it, but we had a little stop in the field back there. We didn't film because we were exhausted. Just a little bit. Just a bit <laughs> tired. And we thought, go on, Michelle. <laughs> what did we think? <laughs> I don't know what we thought. <laughs> we thought we'd walk on a little bit further oh, yeah. and do uh, some filming. We've actually got still, although we did that awful a9 that stretch back there which was treacherous really quite horrible we've now doing this i think this is still the a9 i'm not sure but you can see there's still no uh no sort of hard shoulder to walk on it is at least a little less busy there's not so much traffic and generally the cars coming along spot you in advance and they're able to uh pull over and give you a little bit of space. Some of them give you more than others. And um, yeah, we've still got 13 miles from the last junction. Uh, I think we only walked about two and a half, three in that first section. And we're, we're both already pretty exhausted. So it goes to show it's gonna take quite some time before we both get sort of trail fit, for want of a better word. We're training en route. <laughs> We're in training, aren't we, Michelle? We're in training. How are you feeling, sweetheart? Yeah, I'm not too bad now. It was a bit tired before we stopped, a bit hungry. So we had some food. Yeah, we needed a little. I think our, both of us felt our energy. We were on an empty tank and there was no energy in our body. So we just stopped and had a couple of sort of muesli bars and a few nuts. And some fruit. And some fruit. And some water. And now we'll, we're all tanked up again for another walk. Some silage bags down there. Somebody's making silage. Yeah, I can smell it. My joints are hurting just a little bit. This is going to be quite an experience. We're either going to be worn out completely or fit as fiddles. Where does that come from, fit as fiddles? Hmm. Okay, I'll leave you with that thought. Yes, 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 yes. So we can get off this road and head down. Oh, Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. 
there we are two straggling hikers <laughs> trying to get into our stride and at last something that looks like a bridal way or a ride of way so we're going to get on to some beautiful green ground place where we can probably pitch our tent for the night and it looks to be fairly well protected from the co from the uh the wind maybe, maybe. famous last words <laughs> Whee. that's a golf course is this a golf course it's a golf course so Michelle and I thought we saw a nice hiking path along the front here, but it's actually just a golf course, so we'll probably not even be welcome to it. Golf courses are generally pretty mean-spirited when it comes to anyone standing on their land. As a rule, we could be sleeping here tonight.